My name is Thomas Matthew Crooks. I hate Republicans. I hate Trump. And guess what? This is a follow-up to my worldwide award-winning video titled Mistake Happy. This woman claimed she sat in a bleacher that was directly across from the media area. Then she claimed she sat in a bleacher that was next to the right grandstand. She claims her bleacher was removed before photos oh. were taken. So we were in a bleacher. This is this is in front of our bleacher. So so Trump would be like to the to the right. I'd have to turn my head and watch Trump this way. So what happened was we hear those three shots. When we heard those three shots, Joe had us getting down on that third shot. As this is happening, the people in the bleachers, we were in the third row. So the people up top, now mind you, these bleachers weren't big. Ours were not big. Um, ours, the picture you're showing, our bleachers are not in this. They had, they were, they were. That's the angle one. We're over here, Joe. Those, so we over, let's stay on this for a second because this is important. That's this is a post that here. you've put on <laughs> Facebook, <laughs> right? Really this is. This is kind of important. I just want to make sure yeah. people understand this and that I understand it. So we're looking at, this is an image published, uh, I think, in the New York Post. After the shooting, everybody has cleared out. And what you've pointed out with this arrow is you guys were seated over here looking directly at Trump. So you were not in the bleachers where Corey Comparatore and these other people are. No, they were. that's where you had to get this oh, guy no, in no, this no. suit to bring you. You had to get the guy in the suit to go over there. We were right, right here. In here, Joey. Yeah, we were. I was looking at the screen behind us. Yes, we were. So where is it that you guys were? Trump, this, right? this is yeah. Trump on this. This is the we're sound and the media the right media. here in the middle. Trump yeah. was standing right here in the red box. Where would you guys say that you were? We wanted to sit here. Remember I said to you I want the guy to sit us there. What happened? So you guys were in here, right? Somewhere, Joe? What do you think? I lost you. Okay. I lost you. There you go. You got me? Yeah. Okay. So, okay. Joe, where do you say you guys were seated? I, I say we were, we were in those bleachers. Right here that are missing. Yeah. The missing There ones. were bleachers there. So, But the arrow is pointing to the proper section. Some of the you people got... in our comments are saying, oh, that's not where you guys were sitting and this and that because there are no bleachers here. But to clarify, there Donna, what, is, what does this picture no. show us? Time frame and everything. So in this picture, so where I'm pointing... That's where people were standing. I mean, guys, it was an arrow on a phone. I'm not, you know, you've seen my drawing. But, okay, you see this white building? Yes. We would have been in front, before the white building, closer to the stage, and closer to that angle. Really, where Trump got carried out, you go, you go look at that angle. Yeah, where Trump got carried out, right there, it's before this white building, is all where the bleachers were. So, and if, if I understand you correctly... We see you can almost see those bleachers where the grass was. Uh huh. So you're saying we see one, two, three sets of bleachers here, and you're saying there was at least another one on this side Bingo. that is not shown in this photograph where all these satellite trucks are and everything. That's correct. At least, and there was it, two sets because we, when I say we were in the third row, first two seats, that was where the bar was, but there was a bar, you know, next to it, and there was people in those bleachers going towards closer to Trump. So we were like, it, somebody said there was three sets there. I didn't go all the way down close to Trump. I was in the third set. So, you There's know, one that's or two at least. And Joe, yeah. you concur with that? Do you agree with what your mom remembers? I mean, I, I, I thought we were in the other ones, but I guess so. But there were bleachers here, and you guys were in the bleachers, and now they're gone from the photo. Is that correct by your recollection? Yeah, we were around that area. So it's odd that these bleachers would be removed, and these other ones haven't been, right? Well, and the well, and you're looking, and when you look at where our area is, right across there is the media. That's what that big blue thing is, or it's sort of bluish. Yeah, that's where the media was sitting in there. So that's so they were that's. Go right across from there. That's where I would, if I took a picture right across from me, that's what I got the media. That's where the bleachers right. were. And no, this woman and son did not sit in some imaginary bleacher across from the media area. This woman sat in the right grandstand. This woman claims a woman and man were shot in the right grandstand. No, David and James were shot in her grandstand. This woman ducked when shots were fired. She didn't even look up until after David was removed from the grandstand. 
She didn't even stand up until after David and James were already removed from the grandstand. Her son was looking up at the area where James was shot. He claims a man was carried out by one leg. He's confused with what he saw that day and what he saw on TV and in videos. The man carried out by the leg was Corey, and he never saw Corey being carried out by the leg that day because he wasn't in the same grandstand. He didn't even look at Corey's grandstand to see Corey carried out. So here we get a good idea of where you guys were seated, because we see the flag hanging and we see the bleachers right. and one of these signs. So this is sort of basically where you were. On the side, yeah. We were on the side, though. We're definitely on the side, because what happened, there was three, those three boards, there was one behind Trump, there was one over on to the uh, right of him over the media, and then there, there was no big screen above Trump and the center grandstand as this woman falsely claims. And that's not Corey Comparatory, David Dutch, or no, James no. Copenhagen. And as you know by seeing me on the news, we thought at the time it was Corey because that man was dead. At least we think. Right, well, Joe? We think. Here's my thing. So we had two people down our section. One was carried on a stretcher. The other had a towel over his head and was carried by one arm and one leg. Not by his arm and legs. One arm, one leg, and just left to dangle. Seems dead. Someone, right. You don't care if someone alive out like that. Correct. Again, he is confusing what he saw on TV with what he saw when he was there. Corey had the towel over his head. Corey was carried out by the leg. And Corey wasn't in the same grandstand as this woman and her son. And her son never saw Corey being carried out. Correct. I agree because with someone's that. alive, you're not going to put a towel over their head and just carry them by one arm or one leg. So that's no, why we be careful with a stretcher. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So, so back to I your go, photos. Now we go. Now we go home and we watch the news that night, right? And you know, you hear about Corey. So we obviously made that assumption it was Corey because we're pretty sure to clear this person's gone. Now. I, I watched a documentary, told Joey to watch it, I don't know, about a month ago, and we find where Corey was sitting in the grandstands behind the president. Yeah. So now it's like, here we go again. Who are these people? Who were they? The lady went right by us on the golf cart. The woman did. The two people in her grandstand were David and James. How could she not know this by now when the shooting is almost two months old? That's the picture. So we're there. That's the picture. So this That's doesn't look like an ambulance EMT. Who is this guy? No idea. No idea either. Are Some kind of military EMT. Him, so you can't really see the body, but that's where he was. Yeah, that's, where they, that's exactly where he was. Like I said, they brought him out one arm, one leg, and they just dragged him right into that field. No, Corey was brought out by one arm and leg. This is David Dutch, and David walked out of the grandstand. David was treated on the ground. This is the four-wheeler and stretcher arriving for David. Then David was stretchered off on the back of the four-wheeler. David was then taken to the hospital by helicopter. This was James being removed from their grandstand. James was carried over towards Gray's suit guy in the van. James was then also flown to the hospital by helicopter. The woman's son claims he saw a woman with blood on her arm. No, he didn't. No woman was shot on this day. This woman passed out, and she wasn't shot like this man says. Again, the woman's son is confusing what he saw on TV with what he saw there that day. This passed out woman isn't even in the same grandstand as the woman and her son. This man claims that he carried Corey out of the grandstand. He's lying. It seemed to me the man got hit in the head from behind. Um, he was killed instantly, as far as I could tell. And at that point, a state police and a SWAT team, you know, showed, started evacuating the bleachers. And then I helped carry the man out of the bleachers to a tent that was behind um, the bleachers. You helped carry the man yourself. What was his condition when you were carrying him? He's deceased. He also falsely claims that he saw a woman who was shot in the forearm and hand. And you said there was another woman nearby who was also injured. Where was she in relation to him? I believe she was in the bleachers, like either behind, above me, or just to the side of him. But it seemed like she was kind of up my flank, and then she flinched, and it looked like she had taken a gunshot wound to the forearm and hand. She was hit within the first seven shots. I counted the first seven, and they were very loud and very close. Um, and it killed one man and wounded another woman.
first seven shots that went off, the man got hit, he was killed almost instantly. The woman in the bleachers, she got injured like she got hit in the forearm in the hand. Despite the video proving that he's lying about carrying Corey out of the grandstand, some people in my worldwide award-winning comments section continue to say this man isn't lying. It's simply unreal. This man also claims that he sat in Corey's grandstand, and he was only a few yards away from Corey, but I can't find him anywhere in the grandstand. So where are you sitting in this grandstand, Dr. Liar? He said he was sitting a couple of yards away from Corey. He had a red shirt, a hat, and shorts on party people. So where is he? Do you see him? I'm now going to slowly pan to the right in the grandstand, and he's not there either. Please hit the like button party people and subscribe if you aren't already a subscriber. Rico said people were passing out from shock, and this woman you will see only passed out. There were kids who were just staring because they were in shock and awe about what happened, what's going on, that I had to pick kids up and carry them down the steps. And their, and their parents, I mean, me and other people, we picked up grown adults, put them on our shoulders, and carried them down the bleachers because they were just in shock. Rico helped carry the woman out, and she wasn't shot, otherwise Rico would have talked about her being shot when he did several different interviews. The doctor said he saw a woman in Corey's grandstand shot in the forearm and hand. There would be blood on this woman's hand and arm if she was shot. Then, while making this video, I spotted this out of the corner of my watering eye. Seriously, I had to rub my eye for a second, then when I focused again, I saw it, and said, what the fuck is that? If that's not a red watch or bracelet, then there is blood on her right wrist. So maybe she was shot. Or maybe she cut herself when she went down after the shots were fired. But yeah, party people, that could be blood on her right wrist. This blood doesn't prove that she was shot though. And it doesn't prove the woman and her son saw the blood on this woman's wrist because this woman is in Corey's grandstand, while the woman and son are not. Before Rico helped this woman out of the grandstand, Rico helped Corey, and this blood stain is not from the woman's right wrist that he helped out of the grandstand because the blood stain is already on his shirt before he carried the woman out. Rico has no blood on his right shoulder or on the right side of the front of his shirt after carrying her out of the grandstand. So was, was she wearing a red watch, or red bracelet on her right wrist, or was it blood? You decide, party people. Another viewer on my channel named Tim thinks this woman was shot and carried out. No, I've already shown this woman twice in my videos. This woman also passed out from the heat. Look, you can see her friends are using a Trump rally sign to fan her down. She's overheating. And since her friend managed to cool her down enough so the woman could be taken out with a little help, it proves that Trump signs are more valuable than just being a campaign sign. So maybe you want to get a Trump sign too. And if you do, then be sure to keep this multi-purpose sign after the election is over, because it makes a great fan and we all know it's going to get hot again next summer. That slippery rock Mayor John David Longo helping to take the woman to the tent behind the grandstand but she was not shot. This video footage is 13 minutes after the shooting stopped. Do you really think she sat there shot for 13 minutes before her friends, including a mayor, finally got her help?
Now this woman is waving at me because she knew I'd be covering this case, and she wanted to be on my channel. No woman was shot in the right grandstand that date party people, so don't fall for what some people say on other channels. But someone told a cop that a woman was shot, and the cop said a woman was shot on the cop radio. But unless this woman was the shooting victim, it wasn't correct information. Since we've never heard about a woman being shot, and since there is no blood on Rico's right shoulder, despite this woman's right wrist resting on his shoulder, I say this woman is wearing a red watch or red bracelet, and it's not blood that we might think we see on her wrist. But as usual party people, you decide. Thanks for watching my video party people. Please hit the like button and I'll see you in my next worldwide award winning video. You know what really bugs me party people, non-subscribers, who watch my videos and don't give it a thumbs up, and people who don't watch a video until the very end. This is bonus hidden coverage for those that stuck around to the end. This man was a plant party people. He lied when he said he helped Corey out of the grandstand. He claims he was a few yards away from Corey. As I showed you, he wasn't even in the grandstand. He doesn't even show up at the bottom of the grandstand till the very end. And he approaches the grandstand from the main crowd. So why is he doing a media interview pretending to be someone he's not? And guess what? As one of my smart viewers named Marty points out, he's wearing an earpiece. An earpiece just like gray suit guy wore. And as soon as he arrived, he starts barking orders to everyone, including to Golf Cap Girl. Golf Girl came from outside the grandstand and goes to Corey. So let's follow Golf Girl. She's right here to begin with. She looks down beside the grandstand where all her co-workers are, and next thing you know she's beside Corey. Here Golf Girl almost falls off the grandstand. Here Golf Girl has a little chat with Dr. Liar. And Agent Golf Girl is not the only one who came from outside the grandstand. Here we have Mennonite Man in the hat. He comes from way back in the crowd. He walks into the grandstand and walks up to Corey. He is then seen helping a woman sit up. This guy in the gray shirt and Red Hat is another undercover, and he talks to Mennonite Man. Now here is Mennonite Man helping the woman up.
Then he is seen talking to the doctor and golf girl. Then eventually walks behind the grandstand where no one is allowed, except for those working undercover, that is. Now here he is walking off to talk to the sweat cops. Now the undercover guy in the gray shirt and red hat, who just talked to Mennonite man, started out right here. Then he works his way into the grandstand, and after talking to Mennonite man, he just hangs out there doing nothing. Did you know that after high school Thomas Crooks spent $5,000 to join a police training in Missouri, but only lasted one week? And did you know that I'd really appreciate it if you'd hit the like button and share this video with all your flick-friendly friends? So what is this undercover even doing? He worked his way into the grandstand, and now he's just sitting there doing nothing. Now let's go back to Dr. Liar. Here he is arriving from within the crowd. He's talking to all these people he pretends that he doesn't know. He claims he carried Corey out of the grandstand, which wasn't true. But once Corey is removed from the grandstand, Dr. Liar walks beside the grandstand with the cops. Once on the side of the grandstand, Dr. Liar talks to this guy. Then this guy walks over to talk to the SWAT cops. Now we see Dr. Liar telling Rico what to do while they are beside the grandstand. Now, remember, this Democrat is a doctor. He claims he carried Corey out of the grandstand, which wasn't true. He also claimed that he was sitting in the grandstand only a few yards away from Corey, which is also a lie. Now, I've had the pleasure several times in my life to expose useless lying cops, and this is just the latest. Why this dumb fucker thought he could get away with lying is simply beyond me but he's been officially exposed. Now, as you watch this Democrat lying doctor standing in the main crowd, listen carefully to what he has to say. I helped carry the man out of the bleachers to a tent that was behind um, the bleachers. You helped carry the man yourself. What was his condition when you were carrying him? He's deceased. He died. How close were you to him? Uh, a couple yards. And you said there was another woman nearby who was also injured. Where was she in relation to him? I believe she was in the bleachers, like either behind, above me, or just to the side of him. But it seemed like she was kind of up my flank, and then she flinched, and it looked like she had taken a gunshot wound to the forearm and hand. Uh, yeah. First, I was in shock because I, I know what gunshots sound like, so I knew they were gunshots. I just I couldn't tell from where they were coming from. And when I noticed someone got hit, then I noticed well. It seemed like they were coming from behind me. So they didn't really need me, so I kind of helped carry him down initially out of the bleachers. Um, so he's directly facing us. Again, it seemed to me like the shots were coming from the rear, like behind us. Everyone, I think, got a sense. Like When I looked out into the crowd, I think they were, again, my sense was they were being shot from behind, so they sounded a bit muffled. Thank you, Mr. Marty, for your sharp eye and amazing detective skills. Now, as I just showed you, Dr. Liar appears to be wearing a drone logo on his polo shirt. A drone was seen flying by several times, and is Dr. Liar holding a drone controller when he was in the crowd? 
You decide for yourself, party people. You just experienced something horrific. Yes. What, what can you tell us about your state of mind right now? Yeah, you know, I, I've, I've had opportunities to go to these rallies before. It was the first one I ever went to. I had, you know, time off to go do it. I was kind of excited to go, but, you know, it's, you know, everyone, everyone, it, you know, it's, it's something you don't expect. It comes out of the blue. It's like a bolt out of the blue, and it's just, it's shocking. Um, you know, the way politics goes in this country, it just seems like it's really polarized. Everyone's just very angry. I'm honestly shocked this didn't happen earlier. Um, I was coming to my friend and went with the to the event with me. I was like, you know, you know, the back behind the bleachers, it's really open. It seems like a really open venue. And it's just, you know, I, I got this sense that, you know, someone really wanted to do something. And again, I, I was openly talking to her. And I was like, you know, if something was bad was going to be happening, this is the perfect venue to have. I just said this like an hour before it happened. I was like, this would be the perfect place to do it. Thank you for watching my video and sticking around until the end of it. Please hit the like button, leave some comments, share the video, and I'll see you in my next amazing worldwide award-winning production.